Hey, welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, today's film is a review of a gift that I received from the lovely Kay. You may have spotted this very colourful box that has been sitting behind me for a little while. But that contained the Electro Turquoise palette, which is completely camouflaged by this box. Let's put the box down. That's the uh, Electro Turquoise palette from Kaleidos. This completes the the skinny Kaleidos palette collection. I've got all five of them now. So, if you want to see exactly how I achieved this look and what I think of this palette, then my friends, you are in precisely the right place. Grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up. And enjoy because here it comes hey welcome back from the intro right I will have told you in the intro which palette I'm using but regular viewers will have seen it in its box behind me maybe they wouldn't because I do kind of sit in front of it because my lovely friend Kay sent me this as a Yule or Christmas present because she knew that I had the first four and she knew that I was looking frantically on Depop to try and get number five and bless her she bought it for me for Christmas or for Yule. Um, she gave me permission to use it early if I wanted to. Can I just, I, I just need to show you this, how well Kaleidos package their things right so you open it up and you've got a message from the future from Kaleidos um, mission objective you're now entering the future of makeup please prepare for arrival mission objectives achieve maximum unique color combinations seamless blending and high pigmentation have fun and be yourself and check in and it tells you how to tag them in Instagram and stuff be advised your participation may cause those around you to become severely dazzled. Thank you for your support. Together we can make the future of makeup bright. Love that. But then you have this kind of, it, it's kind of like polystyrene, but it's thicker. It doesn't sort of bobble apart like the, the white polystyrene does. And then depending on how many palettes you're getting, you have your palette and then palette sized ones so they can send up to three in here but it just it protects them so so well um, the first Kaleidos palette that I got was the Cyber Rose one which I got from Depop and again there's another thing of this in the bottom of here but I'm keeping the box because it's useful, you see, and it's pretty. And I, I kept the green one because I bought the green one direct. Um, let me just pop this back in. Yeah, I picked up um, the pink one first. What was it called? I'm sure, I just told you what it was called. Anyway, I picked up the pink one first absolutely fell in love with the quality um, so got the second one which is the bronze one <sighs> my favorite of all of them that I'd seen when you know they'd only got the first three out at that point was the green one which <sighs> nobody was selling on, on Depop so I ordered it directly from Kaleidos and literally two days later it appeared up on Depop for a tenner and I'm just like yeah. 
<clears throat> and then I picked up the neon one. Yes, it's a Jeffree Star metal straw. So this one, Electric Turquoise, is the one to complete my set. I did open this when it arrived, and I did tell Kay that I'd opened this when it arrived to make sure it was not damaged. And that is the colour scheme for those of you who have not already seen it. The um, I normally end up sticking the nameplate onto the mirror because be quite honest, I don't tend to use the mirror anyway. But do you think I can see my double-sided tape anywhere? The correct answer to that is no, of course I can't see my double-sided tape anywhere. Goodness only knows where that's gone. Just have to be careful with that then and hold on to it for now. So Two matte turquoise, a light and a dark, a matte orange, a matte chocolate brown, and then two shimmers in like a silver shade and a turquoise. So obviously I'm 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 gonna have some fun. Ooh, just swipe a little bit of blue tack that I normally use to stick my phone on so that when it buzzes it doesn't vibrate everything. I can just use a little bit of blue tape for the minute just to hold that in place until I can get some tape on it just so that I don't lose the nameplate. Now, um, absolutely, Kate is such a lovely friend, She's she, she spoils me, she really does, she sends me, she regularly has clear outs of her makeup and sends it to me, I get all kinds of wonderful things from her, she sent me my first Viseart palette was from her, um, one of the brands that I wanted to try last year, and I can't think of the name, but Igneous Cosmetics, she sent me one of theirs, that she, and, and amazingly it was one that I was looking at for purchasing at the time as well, um, <laughs> she sent me my Juvia's Highlight, and my Juvia's Blush, no actually I think I bought the Juvia's Blush, but she, I know she sent me the Juvia's Highlight. And she got me the Juvia's Blush palette, the six pan one. But she spoils me, she really does spoil me. So thank you, Kay. I'm sorry it's taken me so long to get back. Oh, ooh, it's reflective. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, I didn't realise that until now. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm a bit of a magpie. Kay, thank you so much. I'm sorry it's taken me so long to get around to filming with this, but with not being too well and needing to clear off all of my old films that I'd got pre-recorded before they were heinously out of date, I can now play with this one. Now, this is still a teaching channel. I am still going to be going at a rate that beginners can follow me. So if that is too slow for you, there's a speed widget up there somewhere. Please feel free to use it. Right. Uh, face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed with my usual antiperspirant primer. More details of that are in the film that is linked in my description box. Right, let's get you zoomed in. I'm going to... My white balance is going to go up and down like nobody's business because we've just got a huge black cloud out there. And for once I'm actually filming in daylight. But hopefully my LED lights will keep things... A little bit stable. I'm going to zoom you in and talk you through the difference between hooded lids and deep set eyes and then I'm going to start chucking some colour onto my lids. Now for those of you who know what I'm about to say feel free to fast forward until you see me wave a brush at you uh, that has colour on it. I always zoom in really close so you can absolutely see what's going on and follow on even if you are watching on your phone which is when I watch most of my tutorials. Now when I look straight ahead with my brows relaxed you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner so I don't have 
hooded lids is only if your static upper lid completely covers right down to the lash line part or all of that mobile lid that you have a hooded lid or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Let me demonstrate the difference for you with deep set eyes. If I cover, I'll do it this side because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I can make sure I'm still on camera and in focus. If I cover my mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more space that tucks back away out of sight. And if I cover the static lid and do the same thing, you can see I've got space above there that folds back away too. And it's those two bits of lid that fold back in rubbing together that give me the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid rather than just through the socket. And if I'm using glitters, mm. even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch right through the middle. So, how to tackle it. If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, and sketch out on your static lid a new crease. Now, obviously, that will reduce the space between your new crease and your brow, so use slightly smaller blending brushes, and if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow. If, however, you have deep set eyes like I do, what we have to do is just, when we're putting the deepest colour through our crease, just every so often stop, open our eyes, relax our brows, and just make sure we've brought it up high enough that we can see it. So, two very, very different workarounds for two very different eye issues. Now, my eye primer is, as always, my Chrome Pebble. This is blank page cotton. I've already gone through one of those and I already have another one ready for when this one runs out. I do have a discount with them. It is listed below. I don't get money from it, but I earn pebbles which I can then offset against purchases in the store, which means I get the chance of showing you more items quicker because I can offset it. Right. All of my details of all of my uh, discount codes are listed in the description box and all clearly state whether or not I earn from them. Genuinely, don't know where to start because this is just so beautiful. <laughs> I think I'm going to start off with Force Field, which is the lighter blue turquoise. These are a little bit dusty, if you can see that. But I just um, I just keep the the kick up in the pan and then next time round when I go back in and dip back in I've got product I can grab. So I'm going to start off I'm holding the brush right at the very end. This is a duo colour or do colour D O C O L O R that I got from AliExpress. Um, they're okay, but they're no they're, they're no better than the cheaper AliExpress brushes that I've also got listed in the film. Which brushes do I recommend? Right. So I'm going to start off with. Ooh, look at that pigment. Hmm. I'm going to start off with little circular movements, going in one direction towards the nose and then reversing the direction to come back out again. And the reason I do that is because I'm 45. I've lost 14 stone over the last few years, which is just under 200 pounds. So the skin on my eyelids moves, but I know 20 year olds has always been skinny that have quite flexible eyelids. And by doing this, you're gently moving the skin around so you don't skip any areas. I'm just building the colour up because obviously I tapped off quite a bit because I wasn't quite sure how bright this was going to be. So I'm just building the colour up to the shade that I want. The only difference is with this eye here, you can see I've got a super deep creasing just here. 
This is where this eye was pulled around when I was five years old at the ophthalmic hospital. When I was trying to work out why I wasn't seeing properly. And unfortunately that has left me with those super deep creases. So I do have to manipulate that eye around a little bit more. Uh, but you'll see that when we come to that bit. So this is performing exactly the same as the other Kaleidos palettes that I've got. Very, very easy to pick up pigment and equally easy to lay it down. I do struggle here and here, both eyes, with dry patches, as you can see, because this side is con on absolutely fine. And this side has got a bit here that does not want to take pigment today. If that happens, we just add some more pigment to our brush. And once we finish blending all the edges, we just tap the extra pigment on. And tell it, it will do what we want it to do. Um, if you can hear running water, Hubby's in the shower, by the way. He's got his uh, first driving lesson today. I mean, you've been driving forklifts for years, but never bothered with like, learning how to drive a car. But my pain's getting so bad now that it's getting to the stage where I'm, I need him to be able to drive. Because there's times that you know we need to be places or we need to do things, and my pain is just so high that um, I struggle just with the driving. I mean, I don't drive if my pain levels are too high, we end up having to get a cab or get a friend to pick us up. But there are times when I just think, oh, I wish you could do this drive today, bye. So I'm just cleaning this brush off on a clean washcloth. Uh, I used to use colour switches, but I'm not so keen on them now. Um, I found they were very harsh on bristles, especially if you used... Um, natural hair bristles. These are synthetic. Uh, I'm going to go into Voltaic, which is the orange, because I'm going to try and use as many of these colours today as I possibly can. Oh, look at that. I'm just going to pop that. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I think I should have tapped off a little bit, what do you reckon? Oh boy, I'm just going to buff over where the two colours meet just to blend them together a little bit. Just clean that brush off because obviously it's now got blue on it. Oh, I like this. So how was your, uh, your Christmas and New Year? Did you set yourself any resolutions at the beginning of the year? Did you manage to stick to them so far? I know it's only a few days in, but I usually manage to break my res. I, I give up making resolutions, to be honest, because I know I just end up breaking them. I mean, every year for about 10 years, one of my um, New Year's resolutions was to not lose my temper so quickly. I think I, I hope the, the record for me breaking that one was about six hours. Yeah. I think the less said about that, the better, right? Eh? I'm just going to pop a little bit of extra blue on this side. I'm just sitting back and checking that I've got matching shapes because obviously I don't Photoshop, I don't use filters. The most I'll do is, when my white balance is going up and down because of the sun coming in and out behind the cloud, I'll tweak the brightness, but I don't adjust the colours, I don't adjust the blending. Everything you see is achievable, because if I can do it, you can do it. So, again, I've cleaned the brush off, and I'm now going to go into Digiteal, like that. I do like that. That's the deeper of the two teal. Mats. Not beautiful. And I'm just going to tap off a little bit though, given that the orange shocked me quite that much. And I'm just going to run this all the way along. Pick up 
Where are the exits? Deepen it up a little bit. So I'm just going to run that across the bottom of both of those just to tie those colours together. And that's looking really pretty. Oh, I can't wait to see what else colliders are bringing out. I... Kay did say she was going to get you one of the highlighters and I'm like, no, you can't do that. Just The palette is enough, thank you. But now she's got me looking at the highlighters and I'm thinking, hmm. They do look good. I mean, I was, I was trying not to buy more highlighters this year because I've got so many and then one of the first purchases that I made spending some money that my dad sent us I was on a new foundation that I wanted to try and uh, <clears throat> a highlighter It worked out fair because we had uh, another person give us some money as well for Christmas. So, hubby said, well you have the one for me dad and I'll have this one. Rather than sort of split half and half over in two different shops. So that worked out really nicely. This is blending so nicely. I'm sounding surprised because all the previous ones did as well. Obviously got dry patches on this side today. It does not want to take colour. But you can see from this side it's it's not the palette that's the issue here, it's just it's me that's the issue. I always get more fallout this side because obviously the skin on this eye is looser. Um, it really doesn't worry me at all. It's one of the reasons that I stopped doing my base first. And um, I now do my eyes first. Because then I don't have to worry about what my... Um, <sighs> what my fallout's like. Sorry, pain spasm. Right, I'm now going to swap for a slightly more tapered brush. It is clean, it's just stained. And I'm going to go into Wired, which is this beautiful chocolate brown. I'm just going to use this just to really deepen up just the outer edge. Tiny, 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 tiny little circles. I'm going to go about halfway along, about to where the orange and the turquoise meet on the top there. Just to deepen that edge up a bit and bring it down just onto the mobile lid a little bit too, just on the outer edge here. Hmm, I like that. I do know that one of my lovely 4F family is actually thinking of starting her own channel. She's been encouraged by watching me and which reminds me, I will send you details of my camera shortly honey if I haven't already done so. Because I did promise I'd do that and my spasms completely forgot. But, once she's got her channel up and running, I will let you know and send you across to her so you can check out some of hers and support one of the 4F family in a venture. I like that. I like that a lot. Right. Now this is a Jeffrey Morphy lip brush. <laughs> JS24. 
but I like it because it gets right down into this corner and what I'm going to do to wet the pigment after I've applied it to the brush this is actually it's not wet and wild photo focus primer water anymore because that emptied but I really like the mister on this so I had one of those do you remember the makeup obsession spray that I had that was uh, one of the ones with the shimmer in it oh my god it was like it was like sticking your face in a bowl full of glitter it went everywhere it was on your face it was on your clothes it was in your hair so I let all of the mica and shimmer and stuff settle to the bottom and then just poured the rest of the spray into this because I figure I'm going to be using this on shimmers anyway so it won't matter so much um, rather than just bin it and waste my money but I can use it for this you can use any liquid to wet a shadow um, I'm going into shockwave now which is the white and I'm just loading up both sides of the brush because you should never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush you will kill the pigment I'm just going to wet the brush now I always dry this ferrule off by sort of tucking it into my knuckles and just spinning it because the last thing you want is moisture getting down here and loosening the glue on your bristles because then, well, then you won't have a brush I'm going to pop this onto the inner corner oh wow now this is not falling your shade regardless what any of the bigger beauty gurus may tell you this is just applying your pigment wet and like I said you can use any liquid um, if you've got a spray that you like you know, if you've got a bottle that you like the spray of it once it's empty refill it you can use primer water setting water moisturizing spray like a Mac fix plus or a Mario Badescu you can just use clean water out of the tap so long as you change it every day just going to dry the brush off before I go back in. That's such a pretty pigment. Now, you're probably wondering why I didn't do a cut crease. I never do the first time I use, or I, I rarely do the first time I use a new palette because I want to see exactly how opaque the shades are. And I can see that this one is not as opaque, this is more of a topper shade. But that's useful to know because then it means I can work out how to use it. God, this smells like, this smells like Turkish delight. Now, because of these creasings here, I do have to stretch this lid out. Otherwise what happens is the, um, the shimmer pigments sort of like stack up in there. But they go on loosely rather than being blended in like this. And then as I move my eye through the day it all ends up cascading down um, and I can get it in my eye and it's uh, quite painful when that happens so I'm just gonna bring this side a little bit further out it's not just a plain silver it's got like a like a champagne shift to it almost but also it's reflecting the blue it's really pretty it's almost like a like a chameleon shade I mean you can see there it just looks there's no blue in that at all and yet when it's on my eye you can see it's reflecting up rather than waste it it's reflecting up off of the blue around it that's so pretty right now I'm going to go into Tron who is old enough to remember that film and who is daft enough to go and watch the sequel no Tron in its time was an amazing film Tron remade in the 2000s 
Okay, this is one of those shimmers that looks like it's getting hard pan the instant you use it, you see? But it's still letting me pick up pigment. So it's obviously, I would imagine this one's going to be a lot more opaque than the white. Um, it's obviously got a lot of oils in it to give you the shimmer. So I'll just pop this on this part of the eyeball. Well, eyelid, not the eyeball. That would be silly. And just blend it into that brown at the edge there. Just to soften the effect where it makes. And lightly drag where it makes the white. Look at that, isn't that pretty? And do you realise I've actually managed to use every single one of the shadows? Go me. Well, I wanted to use as many as I could. <laughs> I know a lot of people were saying, oh, why are you putting orange in amongst all the blues? But they know their stuff because, I mean, you can see this is a really nice pop of... Reminds me of um, a tropical bird or something. Obviously this side I don't need to pull this part of the eye out. It was only literally the bit there that has the really, really deep creasing that I have to... And you saw that I didn't take it out too far. I didn't, you know, pull my eye out to my ear roll or anything. And... Uh, yeah, and I let go as soon as it was filled in basically and I've got to the part of the eye where I didn't need to stretch it anymore. Right I'm gonna just tidy this up with a bit of micellar water and bung some base products on and then I'll be back to finish off this eye look with you. Now for you my darlings there will be absolutely no delay at all you will see me instantly. I however will see you the very next time that I press the record button. So I'll see you uh, now, I guess. Hello, I am back. Not entirely sure I've chosen the right shade of foundation, but um, it's okay at the moment. We just got to pray it doesn't oxidise. Mm. <coughs> ah! Sorry, there was an ox over there. I'll make I'll make sure it dies so it doesn't oxidise. <laughs> That's the husband. Right, going back in with this, and I'm going to go into Wired, which is the deep chocolate brown that I used before. I'm just going to connect up to here because I'm struggling fibro wise still with my eyes being very, very watery, so I can't put um, liquid liner on much as how I'd like to. I think a wing would look amazing with this look. Um, but I just, I can't risk it because my eyes are really sensitive at the moment. Um, and I think if I put a wing on, it's just going to, my eyes are just going to start streaming. But by connecting up with the colour that you've used on the outer edge there, and just by pressing a very, very dark strip just at the edge there, it can give you. Shh, rude. It can give you the same impression of the eyes being tilted up and out. So it gives you the same cat eye effect, which is great. Right, this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette, which I love it because it's flat top but it's chunky. Just at me. <laughs> And I'm going to go into Force Field, which is the lightest of the, the uh, two turquoises. And I'm going to buff out along the 
a lower lash line just to soften that off a little bit. I was tempted to go in with Voltaic, the orange, but I just want to leave that pop of orange just up here. Just as a, well, pop of orange really. I like that. Clean the brush off. Now, one of the things that I did manage to pick up, which I had wanted for ages and missed out on because when Mac had it in stock I didn't have the money, was this Mac. What do they call these? the luminous skin dimensions or whatever the heck they call them trip the light fantastic powder in shade luna luster which is the the star trek collab they did love me a bit of star trek love me a bit of mac really wanted this couldn't afford it at the time saw it come up on depop and was like I'm having me a bit of that. This is just a cheap lip brush that I bought off of eBay years ago, probably about a decade or more ago now. I'm just going to pop some of this just up under the tail of the brow, just to lift the brow slightly. And then on the inner corner. I think I might need to go lighter for the inner corner. So I'll grab my Juvia's as it's close. This is the Tribe Highlighter in shade 3. Tribe Highlighter Volume 3. So I should use this one for the inner corner. It's got a little bit more of a pop. Which is what I like from that inner corner. Good lord, does this mean I'm actually going to have a sensible highlight on today? We'll see. I may end up sticking another one over there. Although that does look like it's got a bit of a... It's got a bit of a kick, hasn't it? Yeah, it's got a bit of a kick. I'm sure it'll be fine. Right. I'm going to pause you one last time while I lob some more of this MAC highlighter all over my face. Uh, choose a lippy, put some mascara on, do something with the hair. I'll be back with my finished look. There we go. I am done. This is probably the most subtle you will ever uh, see my highlight. Reminds me an awful lot of the hourglass highlight that I've got. And I'm really... Comparing it to my shoulders, I really think my face is a different colour. It definitely looks it in the viewfinder. How's it looking, honey? I'll come over and have a look for you. Uh, it looks a little darker in places, I think. Yeah. Just a little bit. Hubby. Hello. <laughs> um, the mascara I went for today was my Catrice Glamondol Waterproof Volume Mascara. This is a bang on dupe for the Benefit Bad Girl Bang, uh, but it's waterproof and it's cheaper. I believe Benefit have now got a version of Bad Girl Bang that is waterproof, but this is still cheaper. And the lipstick is one of the Sapphire Nygaard uh, Colourpop ones. This is in Bikini Bottom. Now I only managed to pick up three of these because I basically couldn't afford to get all six. I'd love to have got all six, but I just got three. Um, but I do like the Colourpop Lux uh, lipsticks. I've got two other ones of theirs. I've got um, Getty, which is actually a, a deep turquoise, which would have gone lovely with this look, but I wanted the eyes to be the focus, not the lips. Um, and Still Crazy which is a really nice sort of mauve nude, slightly deeper mauve nude. But this is about uh, this palette. Now obviously I've used every single shade today on my eyes and 
to be honest I think this is one of my favourite eye looks that I have done in a very very long time I absolutely love the pop of orange with the turquoise I think it's a really really clever choice of colour to put together um, and I think it will encourage people who are not used to putting complementary colours together it might encourage them just to you know sort of spread spread their wings a little bit and, and be a little bit more adventurous um, see now that the sun's gone down behind the cloud and my white balance on my viewfinder has changed my, my face looks the same colour as my chest again I genuinely don't know what's going on folks uh, I'll, I'll keep you updated um, the way that I'm doing foundation reviews now is rather than just bunging them on doing a one day wear test for you where I do sort of usually between 8 and 12 hours I'm actually wearing them under different sort of weather conditions and different circumstances just so I can give you a more rounded review and it's the first time I've worn this particular foundation so um, I like the way it's looking at the moment it's I'd say it's medium, medium coverage on me, but then I did use a fuzzy sponge. This is not the Juno sponge, this is a cheaper AliExpress version, um, as you can see, used it today. Um, I did use a fuzzy sponge which does sort of, you get, you get less coverage than you do if you use a brush, put it that way. Um, but being 45 full coverage is not always your friend if you catch my drift on that one so uh, I hope you enjoyed this again this is a double thumbs up from me just like all of their palettes um, I think I've got tutorials for all of them except the neon one I haven't done a tutorial with the neon one yet let me know if you want that or if you'd rather I wait until closer to the summer before I drag the neons back out again. Um, let me know. But Kay, thank you once again for this. I absolutely adore it. I'm so happy that I've now got the full set. Thank you very much indeed. It means an awful lot to me. Um, I hope you like the look that I produced. If not, I'm sure you'll tell me. Right, if you are a regular 4F baby, please double check you are subscribed because... As uh, last year's uh, tradition seemed to be, put a film up, lose some subs. For the first two films that went up this year, I lost two subs and then I lost one sub. So in the first week of this year, I've managed to lose three subs. Marvellous. Great. Anyway. For the other 600 and some odd of you out there who are still watching me, I hope. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, you know, be sure to give me a like, give me a comment. Uh, if you're going to be brave enough to give me a thumbs down, tell me why. Don't just click the thumbs down and run away like a little child. Grow a pair. And if this is your first time to my channel, I hope you've enjoyed this. And it would be awesome if you would like to join the 4F family by hitting that subscribe button. Uh, I've got plenty of other films you can watch if you want to check a few more to see if you like my personality or not. But you are more than welcome to join, even after only watching one film. Let's face it, it's still free. Although knowing YouTube, how long that'll be the case. Um, do hit the notification bell and select all notifications because sadly gone are the days you could just like a channel and their films would appear in your newsfeed. Right my darlings, all that remains for me to say as ever is you'll stay fabulous and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.